Preppy Radio, this is Chiara Nicoletti from the London Film Festival 2019th edition I'm with Nina Danino, director of Dio Sadness, crying for you in the experimental section. Welcome, Nina. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very nice to be here. So, for, for, for our listeners, how would you describe your film? Uh, well, it's an essay film, so it, I guess it's not like a kind of traditional documentary. And... Um, And it uh, takes you through a journey through my experience of Coppola. Um, and it does it using archive from television, a little bit of archive from cinema, new performances that I filmed with a new singer of Coppola, uh, documentary material from that belonged to me, to my private archive, um, and... Um, and a soundtrack with some singing and me sort of taking you through some of the cultural history of the film from within the culture, if you like, and some me going uh, outside of that and looking at it personally from my personal experience of it. And um, uh, so it's like me exploring whether I can sort of take this form out from where it sits within and kind of make it into a more a transcultural kind of form of knowledge or experience. Well, would you say that, I read that if we want to define Coppola, you could say that it's a performance of women's sorrow, is that correct? Well, I mean, I'm not a scholar of Coppola. I have, of course, researched and studied it so I know quite a bit about it now but I, 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 start, I started the film researching it and making you know look reading what has been written about it which is not that much but uh, I felt that uh, the angle that I wanted to take or the entry point that I interests me because it was there in other work that I've done is through the aspect of sorrow but Coppola is not just about sorrow I think it's a very broad genre that has more funny songs in it it has many different kinds of um, types of emotions in it but I was interested in the one of the of the the aspect of sorrow and the aspect of unrequited love and the aspect of women uh, in particular women's ostracization from society from which they sang that you know, from which the lyrics are kind of written to express positions where these are marginal outcasts, if you like, often in the song. So I kind of took that uh, position to the, to, the, to the material. So could we say that even if we're talking about like the past, if we're searching the past, we're also talking about the present, especially nowadays for us women? True. Well, that's a really big question. I don't know, really, because the question for me at the end was, I, I feel that what the film is about is like inventing the woman of Coppola, because the woman of Coppola, of course, does not exist. So I kind of invent her in the film, in my film, you know. So the question is, A, does she exist anymore? Can she exist anymore? Do we want her to exist anymore? And what is this sorrow for? You know, what was the sorrow for? Can women experience that type of sorrow today? That's my main question. Do we want that kind of sorrow anyway? But uh, I, I'm not sure. At least the, I don't have an answer to that. It's the journey that I've taken. I don't have the answer. It's something that I felt myself experiencing, you know, bits of Coppola, but I don't have the answer to it. But what did you learn during, what did you learn during this seven years research? Um, well, I did other films as well. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this thing was all like there, you know, in the, in the, on the, I've made two or three other films in the meantime. So this was a very long process. So, uh, so this particular film came out of a big chunk of material of research and it came together very quickly. So, because there will be a feature film as well, but this is material that I pulled out and I made into an essay film. So, um, So what did I learn? For this film, what I learned, I think, was the... Uh, for me, it was really about revisiting the, 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 the genre because I didn't know very much about it. All I, re all I knew about it was that I remembered it and that it caused a, a feeling of 
passion in me, you know, it, it kind of made me cry uh, in some cases. So I, I, I didn't really remember it. That so, so the whole process of the film was about revisiting my musicological kind of context. And that included Gobla, but not just Gobla. So I started out in a big space, uh, you know, going back over the, the music that I remembered. It included Latin American music, you know, boleros, Mexican music, you know, the Latin American music of, of kind of like the... Well, Gobla was still around in, 2000, in the 2000s. You know, it was still being performed on television in the, because that's the, 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 the last archive that I have from our TV is from... 2003 that was the last performance you know so it's very contemporary it's not like it's not something like way back there it's here and it was here like 10 years ago 15 years ago so it's quite interesting you know so Copa has continued really um, so uh, yeah so what did I learn from it um, I, I, I think I just learned uh, more about music genres and where they fit in and what they are, and where they come from, and who sung them, and who the composers were. <laughs> and, you know, so I was making a map of all this music. I was thinking that since you're in the experimental section, and when a film doesn't respond, let's say, to certain elements that can categorize it, they say that it's experimental. So what is experimental for you? And is there such a thing as, as an experimental film? right now? That's a very interesting question because my history is in, in, in experimental film when it existed as a kind of culture. Experimental film culture doesn't exist in the same way anymore so because it moved into, into uh, artists moving image for example it moved into the gallery so I show I do installations and so forth but uh, I don't consider myself a sort of moving image um, artist uh, in that sense. I really come from more experimental film. And what does that mean? It means that you're kind of thinking much more about the language of film, you know, the cut and the language of film and all that. So I come from that background. So what does it mean to... So what does it mean to have... That's a very, very interesting question for me personally because how do I import some of the things that I learned into the, the work I'm doing now, which is, does not look like the work that I made, you know, in, in pure experimental film. I mean, for example, this film has sync, sync sequences, you know, women yeah. performing to camera. Lovely, I mean, I enjoyed that, but that w is not what you associate with experimental film as such, you know. So um, I love the idea of moving on, you know, changing, but bringing what you've learned with you, taking it into your new into your new work. So I think you never, experimental film never leaves you, really, because you learn so many things about how to think uh, through uh, different solutions and different visual solutions to things that you might not do quite so easily if you're using more standard forms. So I think what experimental film allows me to do is to think a little bit more flexibly with my materials and to kind construct uh, so it's not like a formula or anything and no I don't think it exists in the in, in the cultural sense anymore mm. it's a very interesting question thank you so I'm really at that point now in my work as well so thank you so much okay. Nina okay. thank right. you okay. thank you so much Dina Danino for yes. presenting I Die of Sadness crying for you a screening in the experimental section here at the London Film Festival thank you so much for being with us okay thank you very much nice to meet you and this is Chiara Nicoletti for Fred the Festival Insider